change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden and I've got some very exciting news for you today. Audible is having another huge sale. They've got 200 books on sale for $4.95 each, but you've got to act in the next couple days because the sale ends September 26th at midnight Pacific time. And I'm going to give you my recommendations from this sale. There are seven books that I've already read, so I'm going to tell you what I liked about these books and why I'm recommending them to you. And then there are additional 21 books that I have not yet read, but I'm very excited to, so I'm going to be buying those as part of the sale. And I'll tell you why I think these books are going to be interesting. In order to take advantage of this sale, you need to be an Audible member. So if you're already signed up, have fun. But if you're not yet signed up with Audible, you can click this link right here and get a free 30-day Audible membership where you get one book for free and you get to take advantage of the sale price of all these books that I'm about to mention. If you want to cancel at any time within that 30 days, you're welcome to do so. You're not going to be charged for the membership, but you will be charged for any books that you bought at that sale price. So you get to keep those and the free book that you get as part of your free membership. So if you're not a member yet, click this link right here. You help this channel out by doing so, and you get to read some really amazing books. Audible and audiobooks have changed my life. So I'm very excited when sales come up because it allows me to consume even more information. Okay, so here are the recommendations. In order to access this sale on Audible, when you go to their homepage, you'll see four thumbnails in the bottom of the main graphic. And the third icon over or third thumbnail over says win-win. And when you click on that, the win-win sale comes up. And you can click on the graphic and it will take you to the list of books that are available. Of the seven books I've read on this list, my favorite by far is The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. I gave this book four stars when I read it, and I think it is absolutely essential reading. Jonathan discusses the psychological need for belief in something bigger or something beyond our present existence. The research that he's looked into basically states that this is the default state of the human brain. It needs to believe in something beyond what is. We have a built-in sense of agency. And knowing this makes it easier to be open-minded when we interact with other belief systems, while at the same time not being righteous with our own belief systems. When one can see that the human brain needs to create a belief system, then we can also see that this is not something that people do by choice, and this is not a sign of one's intelligence. It's simply the default state of the human brain. And this allows us to be more compassionate and open-minded with other cultures and other people. And I think if you are a vegan advocate, which I have been in my life and in some degree I am still, this is absolutely essential reading. If you want to understand how to best communicate what you think is a superior choice, first, please read this book. really opened my mind to communication and understanding and compassion for the natural state of a human brain. The next book on this list that I highly recommend is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And when I read this one, I gave it four stars. It is timeless information. It may have been written several thousand years ago, but because the human brain really hasn't changed in that time, it's still incredibly applicable today. His writings are jam-packed with useful information on how to live a good life and how to build a character of quality and integrity. The next book on this list that I recommend is Eat and Run by Scott Jurek. And if you are a runner, I'm sure you know who Scott Jurek is. If you're not a runner, you should check out my YouTube video where I interviewed Scott while he was running the Appalachian Trail last year. And he broke the speed record going from Georgia to Maine in, I think, 47 or 46 days. Well, this is Scott's book about his rise from challenge as a youngster to one of the greatest ultramarathoners in history. And Scott is plant-based. He is a vegan athlete and someone that I've hung out with a few times over the course of my plant-based athletic journey. And this is a really interesting look inside the mind and life of an ultramarathoner. 
And he's got some interesting plant-based recipes in there as well. The next of my recommended books is The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. This is another four-star book. I first had to interact with this book back in college biology class and didn't quite wrap my brain around it, but now many decades later, I absolutely love this book. Uh, Dawkins is one of the best communicators of the process of natural selection that I have ever come across. He puts it into a language that I think is easily understandable, and that is so valuable because natural selection and evolution are such a complex process on the larger scale that if you don't understand it on a small scale, it just doesn't make sense. And when you hear Dawkins describe how genes function and how genes adapt, which eventually leads to evolution, it all comes together into a nice, neat package, and you're like, oh, okay, that's how it works. Cool. So highly recommend this if you're interested in how we became who we are and how the world will continue to evolve. Next up is The Higgs Boson and Beyond by The Teaching Company. I gave this book three stars when I read it back in January. It's fascinating, but quite technical. So there are going to be spots in there that you might get lost in if you're not really well versed in particle physics. But it's really, really interesting information nonetheless, especially if you want to learn more about the underlying fabric of the universe and you want to know what existence is. This is a great primer on the nature of reality. So good book, but rather technical. There are two more books on this list that I've read, but we're going to get to those later because they're not books that I'm super excited about, but I do want to revisit them. So now we're going to jump into the books that I'm going to buy because they intrigue me, and these are in order of my interest. So the first is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and this is a book that I've been hearing about for years now, and I've always wanted to get it, and for some reason it just hasn't happened across my path until now because it's on sale and I'm suddenly present to it yet again. This book is about the creative process and how to break through resistance and procrastination in order to create your great works. So it's kind of like the principles in the art of war, but applied to the war of art. Next up on the list of books that I'm going to buy, again, in order of my interest, is Coming Closer to Ourselves by Pema Chodron. I'm excited to read anything and everything by Pema Chodron. I would consider her one of my mentors, even though we have never met. She has been a huge voice in the formation of my being and my philosophy on life. And from what I've read on this book, it looks like... Uh, deep investigation into self-compassion and how to essentially use whatever shows up in your life as the way forward. Or as Ryan Holiday has said in his book, the obstacle is the way. So I'm very excited to dig in and see what Pema has to say in this book. I've loved everything else that I've read from her. Next up on my to-purchase list is The Science of Mindfulness by The Teaching Company. And this book, or series of lectures, is delivered by Professor Ronald Siegel, and I'm a huge fan of the courses created by the teaching company. They do a really good job of creating a science-based narrative. Uh, it has a, a nice arc to it. It's like sitting in on a college class. So rather than lots of anecdotes, you get a lot of research and a lot of the mechanics underlying uh, the particular topic they're studying, in this case mindfulness. So I'm really excited to dig in and hear what they have to say about the mindful brain. Next up is You Are Now Less Dumb by David McRaney. Gotta love that title. I read his first book, You Are Not So Smart, a few years ago and really enjoyed it. He's got a very entertaining way of talking about the underlying makeup of the brain and how we have different biases that we fall victim to based on the hard wiring of our brain that make us behave in not so intelligent ways. And by revealing this to you so that you can see the, the man behind the curtain pretending to be the wizard, uh, you can actually behave more intelligently. So I'm looking forward to this book. Next on the list is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. 
The title of this book scares me a little bit, but it's been recommended by a few of the other books that I've read. And apparently it's a book about identity and consciousness and being in the present moment. So I'm curious to see what he has to say. Uh, I'm a little bit skeptical, again, based on the title, but I'm always open to uh, new perspective and looking forward to getting into this. Next is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And I'm sure I've read this before, but I can't seem to find my notes on it. So if I were a little bit tidier on my computer, I'm sure I would come across notes after having read this book because that title is just so familiar to me. Anyway, I'm excited to get in there again and see how she's applying Japanese principles to uh, organization and decluttering because that is definitely something I could benefit from. Next up is The Solution to Social Anxiety by Dr. Aziz Gazipura. And since I've dealt with social anxiety in China pretty much all of my life, this is a topic that I'm fascinated by. And I've read a wide uh, spectrum of opinions, perspectives on this, and I'm always curious to hear what other people have to say. Uh, every book I read on this topic teaches me something about it. And that helps me shape my own experience, opinion, and coaching as I work with people like me. Next up is How Ideas Spread, another course by The Teaching Company. And this one delivered by Professor Jonah Berger. Jonah is an author who wrote the very popular book Contagious. And his latest book is called Invisible Influence. Really, really good stuff in there. So I'm curious to see how he takes that information and turns it into a lecture series about basically what makes an idea contagious, what makes something go viral, why do things spread, uh, why is great content sometimes overlooked and really mediocre content suddenly uh, available everywhere. That's something that I'm always curious about as I try to focus on developing great content, but... Clearly, my ideas don't spread that far, so I'm sure there's quite a bit that I can learn in here. Next up is The Fighter's Mind by Sam Sheridan, and this book is intriguing to me because it appears to go into uh, what it takes mentally to be a fighter, what it takes to get into the ring when pain, suffering, and potential humiliating defeat are waiting right around the corner. Uh, what keeps people in the game? Why do they get back up after being knocked down? How do they take a punch, etc.? I'm very curious to hear what he has to say. This is something that I think about a lot. Next up is The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff. I read this book in college, and I really don't remember a lot about it, except that I enjoyed it, didn't really find anything that I could apply to my life at that point but I was on a very different journey. So I'm excited to go back in and see what he has to say and how I might experience that information differently today. Next is Mini Habits by Stephen Guys. And as many of you know, if you watch my videos, I'm a huge fan of small steps and of making really, really small commitments. So I'm very curious to hear what Stephen has to say about creating these mini habits. Um, because that is the foundation of my philosophy and practice. So looking forward to some new perspectives there. Next up is Nutrition Made Clear, another course by The Teaching Company. And this time it's delivered by Professor Roberta Ending. And this is a long one. It's 36 lectures, which are about 45 minutes each. So the book turns out to be, or the course turns out to be over 18 hours. And it's information that is medically backed and statistically derived. So not just anecdotal evidence or information that we might see in blog posts or magazine articles where the author did a little bit of research, 20 minutes of research, and then wrote an article around one particular piece of information. Next up is Redefining Reality, another teaching company course delivered by Professor Stephen Gimbel. And this is another long one. It's over 18 hours or 36 lectures. And it's essentially about the nature of reality. What is real? What is illusory? What is physical? What is metaphysical? Uh, this is a topic that I'm fascinated by. 
uh, how we experience the world, how we experience thought, how we experience ourselves. Next up is Scientific Secrets for Raising Kids Who Thrive, another teaching company course. This one delivered by Professor Peter Vishton. And again, it's a little long. It's about 13 hours. But with these teaching company courses, you can listen to uh, a 45-minute lecture at a time, absorb it, take some notes, process, etc., and then get on to the next lecture. And I'm fascinated by how the latest information in psychology and neuroscience uh, sheds light into how to best raise kids uh, and how to best educate kids. I think our educational system is way behind the times, way behind the data, and we're using methods to educate our children or to parent our children that uh, have been proven to be ineffective or in some cases harmful, and yet this is still the norm. So anything I can learn about this to then share with as many people as I can, I think is uh, very valuable. So I'm looking forward to this one. Next up is The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. I've owned this book for at least a year on Audible, and I haven't listened to it yet. I keep pushing it down on the list of books to listen to. So it's recommended by a lot of the authors that I've read. It just seems a little too far-fetched for me, but I'm going to give it a chance. I already own it. Why not? Uh, he talks about extreme success, and he talks about achieving goals that are really, really out there, like 10 times bigger than the goals that a normal person would set. And his idea is to move beyond mediocrity. And this is an idea that, at least on the surface, I find a little uh, problematic, but we'll see. I'll give it a shot, and I'm sure I'll find something in there of value. Or I'll find a great opportunity to uh, critique his work and find a different route to success. Next up is The Better Angels of Our Nature by Steven Pinker. I've owned this book for quite a while now and haven't listened to it. And I think the main reason for that is that it's over 36 hours long. That would take me at least a week to listen to, uh, even at double speed. So I read other books by Steven Pinker. I think he is a brilliant writer and researcher. And I've heard interviews with him on this book on NPR and also uh, seen interviews on YouTube. And it's fascinating. Uh, the information he puts forth and the research on violence. And even though it seems like the world is a far more violent place than it ever was, it's actually uh, declining. It's just that we have a media which makes violence more and more available to us at all times. We can see it more frequently, even though it's declining. So it's an illusion uh, generated by the media. Next is My Year of Running Dangerously by Tom Foreman. Tom is a journalist who developed a running habit a few years back after being prompted by his daughter to enter a race. So it's basically the story of him recreating himself as a runner. And I take it that being a CNN correspondent uh, in some war zones, that <laughs> having a running habit in the middle of a war zone can be rather challenging. So I imagine that's what some of the book is about. I'm mostly curious because it's someone telling their story of running and how they became a runner. And as I work on my book, any information like that is useful. Next is The Price of Inequality by Joseph Stieglitz. I heard an interview with Joseph on NPR a while back, and I was really fascinated by it. Uh, this is something that Bernie Sanders was bringing up a lot in his campaign about the 1% of Americans own 40% of the wealth, etc. But he didn't go any further. He just said that this is the case, but he didn't talk about the effects or the cost of this inequality. But Joseph Stieglitz, in the interview that I heard, really went into detail on how this affects society. Next is Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. And this is a topic that I find really, really fascinating. What is gender and what is sex? One is biological or is clearly biological and the other is potentially more culturally constructed. Uh, this is something that I've studied a bit, but I'm curious to learn more and more about uh, as this becomes uh, a topic of public discussion um, more and more frequently these days. And you have some really entrenched views on what gender is and what's appropriate, inappropriate, etc. So the more I can learn about this, the uh, 
uh, more I can be compassionate and understanding of those that um, are different than me. Next is Tattoos on the Heart by Gregory Boyle. This is a series of essays by a pastor who was working in a neighborhood with a lot of gang activity in Los Angeles and how he learned to be compassionate with people that were in uh, very challenging situations and not uh, approaching them with judgment or righteousness um, or condemnation, but how he approached that situation and those individuals with compassion. And compassion is my main tool of communication uh, at this point in my life. Uh, so I'm very curious to see what he uh, unearthed and how he uh, became who he became in this mission of his. Next up is In the Plex, How Google Thinks, Works, and Shapes Our Lives by Stephen Levy. I'm absolutely fascinated and terrified by Google all at the same time. I hope that Google is really considering the impact of its choices and of the products and projects that it is developing. Uh, I'm not a fan of the singularity uh, that Ray Kurzweil says is near, and Google will definitely be a part of that uh, if it keeps its current course. So I'm really curious to get under the hood of Google and see where they're taking us. Next up is the Zero Marginal Cost Society by Jeremy Rifkin. And he's looking into the future of the economy. How do we create wealth or create an income when we can produce products for next to nothing with the rise of the Internet of Things and with 3D printing and information being so readily available to everyone essentially for free? Uh, what is the economy going to look like as we move forward? What are jobs going to look like as we move forward? This is something that I think about a lot. Last on the list is a book I read many years ago, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And at the time, I found a lot of value in the book. I was investing in stocks. I was uh, working quite a few different jobs in Los Angeles, and I found this information to be useful. But my focus and my character have changed quite a bit since then. I want to go back in and I want to see where he's coming from when he gives this information. What is he really ultimately concerned with? Is it simply wealth or is it the betterment of the individual and the community both at the same time? So act soon because this sale ends on September 26th. And again, if you're not a member yet, click this link right here. Sign up for a free membership. Check out all these books and educate yourself. Open your mind to new possibilities. All right. I love you guys. See ya. I read 15 books in the month of October. Some really good stuff in there. So come on over to the whiteboard and I'll show you what I read. Not only was October one of my biggest reading months of all time, but it's also got the highest number of recommended books, which are three stars and above. <laughs>